Hi, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we are into a new chapter, which is chapter 11, Amins. And we're going to look into these five subtopics altogether, which is 11.1 .1 introduction, 11.2 nomenclature, 11.3 physical properties, 11.4 preparation, and 11.5 chemical properties. In this video, we're going to focus on the top topic of 11.1 .1 introduction and 11.2 nomenclature first. So in this video, we're going to look into the classification of the primary, secondary, and tertiary admin as well as we want to learn on how to draw the structure and name the aliphatic, which is the parent chain less than 10 carbon, as well as the aromatic amine according to the IUPAC nomenclature. Also, we're going to give the common name with a parent chain less than 5 carbon. So without any further ado, let us start. So for amines, amines are basically organic derivatives of ammonia, which is NH3, by replacing one of the hydrogen with an alkyl or the aryl group. So the functional, functional group of the amines are amino, where it has a NH2 group here. So the general formula that you are going to be seeing is RNH2, where R can refer to alkyl or aryl group, and this refers to the aliphatic amine. Okay, so aliphatic amine is basically a straight chain amine. Okay, something like this. Alright, and this is known as the aromatic amine. Aromatic amines means that when it is attached with a benzene ring here or the aromatic ring here. Okay, and now we're going to look into the classification of amine. Amine can be classified into primary, secondary, or tertiary based on the number of alkyl or aryl group attached to the nitrogen atom. So in this case, this structure here is known as ammonia and it has no alkyl group attached to it, so we can say that there is no classification. Okay. Meanwhile, for here, the amino group is attached with one alkyl group. So we can say that it is a primary amine. Here we'll have two alkyl group, so it's gonna be secondary amine. Meanwhile, here we've got three alkyl group, so it's gonna be a tertiary amine. Okay, now we're gonna look into the classification of amines but focus on the example here. So for the structure here, the N here is attached with one alkyl group, so it's gonna be a primary amine. Below here, the amine gonna, the end of the amine is going to attach with two alkyl groups, so it's going to be a secondary amine. Meanwhile, for this one, the nitrogen here is attached with one, two, and three alkyl group, and hence it's going to be a tertiary amine. Okay, as simple as that. Now we're going to do the nomenclature for the aliphatic amines, where the IUP rules for naming of amine follows this one. So first, we're going to determine the longest carbon chain with the amino group. Second, we have to give the lowest number to the carbon that is attached with the NH2 group. Okay, let's say if we have a lot of carbon here, and the carbon that is first attached with the amino group is going to take the number one. Okay, and third, we have to identify the substituents. For example, if you have a substituent here, and we need to determine their position. And lastly, we're going to name the compound. So now let us look into the example here. So for the structure of the uh, primary amine, the letter E in the parent alkene is replaced by the suffix amine. Okay, so let's say if you have 1, 2, and 3 here. Okay, so uh, because of 3 carbon, the name is going to be propene. However, when it is attached with an amine group, it's going to be named as propanamine. Okay. So, in alkene, you're going to name, is, name it as propane, okay? But now, the E here, you're going to change it into propanamine. So, E change into amine. And then, if you have a structure here, so the same one where you have to do the numbering where the carbon will take the number 1, okay? Because this carbon is attached nearest to the NH2. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So when it is having four carbon, the name is gonna be butanamine. Okay, because E is changed into amine. And then at carbon number three is it is attached with metal group. So the name is gonna be three metal butanamine. Okay. The next one, if we have this structure here. So uh, we need to do the numbering from uh, the left hand side, which is one. 2, 3, and 4. 
we don't do 1, 2, 3, 4 because we need to take the lowest number. Okay, and that is why we choose the left hand side to the right hand side. Okay, so in this case, it is known as the butanamine because it has four carbon, but now the amine group is attached at carbon number two. So we have to put number two in the front. So it's going to be two butanamine. Okay, and now let's say if you have a structure here. So for the structure here, you need to do the numbering from left hand side as well, which is one, two, three, four, and five. And we don't do it like this because or else our subsequent will take number four. Okay, we need to give the lowest number of the lowest number to the substituent, which is number two. Okay, and that is why we do the numbering from left hand side to the right hand side. Okay, so in this case, because we have five carbon, right? So it's going to be named as pentan pentin, but then we're going to change it into pentanamine. And then the amino group is at carbon number three, so three pentanamine. And then we have a metal group at carbon number two. So it's going to be two methyl, three pentanamine. Okay. Now let us look into the next part, which is um, the naming for the secondary and tertiary amine, where they are named as the end substituted derivative of the primary amine. Okay, so let us go straight to the example here. So here um, we're gonna have the um, we're gonna find the longest carbon chain first, which is number one, number two, and number three. So uh, the three carbon here refers to the propenamine, and then the metal group here, as what you can see, is attached to the amine. So this is known as the secondary. So when it, when it is a secondary amine, uh, we're going to do the naming as methyl, but then the numbering, gonna, we do, we're going to do it as letter N in the front. So the name going to be N-methyl propanamine. Okay, so let us do, do another example. So let's say if we have uh, this structure here, the similar one where you have to find the longest carbon chain. So the carbon next to the nitrogen, which is one, two, three, and four. So this is the longest. So the name gonna be butanamine, and then the it is a secondary amine, and it is attached with the ethyl group. Okay, the ethyl group is attached at N, so it's gonna be N ethyl butanamine. Okay, and now we're gonna do another example which is here is a tertiary amine because it, it is attached with three alkyl group. Okay, similar one, we have to find the longest carbon chain. So the longest carbon chain, as what you can see, is on this side. Okay, so it's going to be one, two, and three. Okay, so here, three here, going to refer to the propanamine, and then it's going to have a substituent of methyl. At the same time, it's going to have a substituent of ethyl. Okay, so um, we're going to do the methyl first because methyl is at the back of the alphabetical order and then we have ethyl. Okay, so methyl is attached at N and ethyl is also attached at N. Okay, so it's going to be N ethyl and methyl propamine, propanamine. Okay. Now, let us look into the nomenclature of the aromatic amine. So, the aromatic amine is basically the derivatives of aniline. So, this is the basic structure here. So, the basic structure here is known as the aniline. Okay? And if, we, if the aniline have a substituent, for example, this one, we're going to name it as 3-methylaniline. And let's say if we have more substituent, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's going to be 2, 4, 6, tripromo aniline. Okay? And for this one, as what you can see, it is a derivative of aniline. Okay? Because initially, it's going to be NH and H, which is aniline. However, one of the H is changed into CH3. Okay? And because of this, the parent name will still be aniline. Okay. However, 
the substituent here, we have to do the naming. So we can say that it's going to be N methyl because the methyl is attached at N, aniline at the back there because it is a derivative of aniline. Okay, similar to the, to the one in the in this structure here. So it is an aniline as well because it is a derivative of aniline where the hydrogen is going to be changed to methyl and another hydrogen here is changed into ethyl. Okay, so here is methyl and here is ethyl. So we're going to do the naming for the metal first because metal is at the lower of the alphabetical order. So it's going to be N-methyl and also N-ethyl aniline. Okay, so the full name is going to be N-ethyl, N-methyl, aniline. Okay, and for this one, it is also an aniline where the hydrogen is going to be changed into ethyl. And the hydrogen of the aniline is going to be also changed into methyl. Okay. And that's why the parent name is still going to be aniline. And then because it has two ethyl group, so it's going to be NN diethyl aniline. Okay. Now we're going to do the naming when it involves multiple functional groups that are present. So usually the NH2 is going to be named as the amino substituent. And it is the same as the priority as what you have learned in the chapter of benzene. So the amino group, the priority here is somewhere in the middle. So if you have a carboxyl acid, COOH, the, CO, the COOH is going to be the parent name. Okay, so similar. So we're going to do the naming first, which is 1 and 2. So 1 and 2 refers to the ethanoic acid. Okay, and at carbon number 2, it's going to be attached with amino. So it's going to be 2 amino ethanoic acid. So the amino is not going to be the parent name. Instead, it's going to become a substituent. Okay, similar to the one that is here. So, for example, if you have a benzene ring attached with OH and attached with amino, so you can see here the OH is going to take the higher priority. So, it will not be named as aniline, bukan aniline. Okay? It is named as phenol. Okay? Because phenol is at higher priority. So, it's going to be 1, because carbon that is attached with OH is going to take number 1, 2, and 3. So it's going to be 3 amino phenol. Okay? And hence the name is going to be 3 amino phenol. Now we're going to look into the common names. So basically, most primary amines are named as alkyl amine as their common name. Okay? So here is kind of simple because as what you can see here, let's say if you have CH3 and H2. So the IUPAC name is going to be methanamine because it has one carbon. The common name is going to be methylamine. So almost similar. So it is very, very easy to detect. And for this one, it's going to be uh, ethanamine. And the common name is going to be ethylamine. Similar to this one. If three carbon, propanamine. If the common name, propylamine. For this one, it's a little bit different but still convey the same meaning. So the IUPAC name is going to be N-methylmethanamine. For the common name, because it has two methyl groups, so it's going to name as dimethylamine. Okay? The IUPAC name for the last uh, structure here is going to be N-methylmethanamine. For the common name, it's going to be methylethylamine. Okay? So actually, it is very uh, direct. So if you know your IUPAC name, and if the question gives out the common name, you can always relate that to the IUPAC name again in order to draw the structure. Okay? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!